We are now approaching the misty, snow-capped peaks the monk desires to call home, a sequestered haven of austerity and mental rigor, where entire lives are spent in the pursuit of becoming one with the world. Of course, our telekinetically inclined friend is not quite so ambitious. He'll be happy enough simply being the one in charge, no matter what it takes. Welcome, young begin your journey. Do not let your opinion of yourself grow too great. Remember this always, a single feather outweighs all mankind. Isaac Newton was down here once. I'm pretty sure he would call that scientifically inaccurate. Our enlightenment-seeking trio has completed the first trial of Zenness, which I'm fairly confident is not actually a word. I'm really behind the technological curve down here. You know, no spell check. The monk has completed the second trial of Zenness. He seems to be tackling these challenges in good faith and the proper spirit of calm. Of course, still waters run deep and very, very dark. Now that was impressive. You'd be amazed how much time some would-be Zen masters have wasted on that one. Just pouring water randomly back and forth between those jugs. I'm sure this crew knew what they were doing the whole time. can seem so real, so crucial, can't they? But in the end, just like everything else, their glimmer fades. Surely the most worthwhile goal is acceptance of one's place in the universe. <clears throat> Excuse me, I, I think these Zen guys are right. Remember this, Apprentice. Your worst enemy cannot harm you as much as your own unguarded thoughts. I see you understand what it is to be at peace with yourself, but be warned, a true Zen master is also at peace with the world. This is going to hurt! Yeah, I don't think that's the orthodox method for obtaining this particular position in the temple. But what do I know? I never passed comparative religion. 